Hey everyone, welcome to Wicode. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this little nav bar here using HTML and CSS. So all it is, I'll of course do this background image as well, but we can just see some nice hover effects on each of the links and everything is evened out. But this is what we're going to build. So to begin, let me move this to the side. So, so now I have our project over here and we have an empty directory. And the first thing I'm going to do is just set up the HTML structure. So we're going to do this in a file called index.html. And I'm just going to paste in some HTML code and then go over what all of it does. And now before we go any further, let me open up this with live server. We're going to have our project over here. Some important elements are this header element, which is used to house introductory content, such as a logo navigation links, which is why it houses all this stuff. Then we have a nav element right here, which is used to house a section of a page that contains navigation links. We have this navbar class, which is going to be used to make our navbar element look like a navigation bar. And then we have an underline text class given to each one of these, which will add a hover effect to the text. Of course, our link tag right here is going to be what brings in all our CSS styles. But so let's create this styles.css page. So I'm just going to call it styles.css. And in here, let's create a CSS reset, import a font, and also create a global variable. And I'm just going to paste all this in just like this. So here, what this is, is this is importing a font called Roboto, and it's from the Google a font APIs. And what this at import rule does here is it imports a style sheet into another style sheet. We also create a global variable called primary, which will be our primary color. And we're just setting this to white. Then we're creating a CSS reset right here to standardize some default styles, such as removing the default margin and padding. And we're setting box sizing to border box to ensure that the content padding and border are included in the total width and height of an element. Now let's create our full screen background image. And this can be done by setting the minimum height of the body element to be the entire viewpoint and also, or the entire viewport, and also setting its background image property. So I'm gonna paste this in. And so before I go over this a bit more, let's use this, import this JPEG. And of course this can be whatever JPEG you want. But so now I've got that imported and we're setting the background image to it right here. So the min height to 100 view height basically means that the minimum height of the body element can only be however big the view window is here. So this entire view window, it can't be any smaller than the entire view. We also center the background image. We set it to fixed so that when we scroll, the whole image is still gonna be there. We set it to no repeat so the image is only displayed once. And then we cover the entire background by setting background size to cover. And now let's style our navbar. And so if you remember, we're gonna do this with a class called navbar. So inside our HTML, we have this class navbar. And what it does is it sets the display to flex. And what that will do is it will place everything in a row. Then we have justify content, which is space between, which will place the logo here and the links over there because it puts space between them. We align the items to be center, which means they're centered in this direction. So the vertical direction. We set the position to fixed, which basically means we're fixing the nav bar to the top, left, and right of the viewport. So it'll be fixed to the top here. We then add some padding of 16 pixels and 32. And now let's style the list items inside the nav bar. And so what we're gonna do, the way we're gonna do this is I'm gonna use a CSS combinator, which is this tag right here. And this is what this is gonna do, is it's gonna style the direct child of the nav bar. So, the direct unordered list child of the nav bar. So if we look in here, our nav bar class, we have a direct child right here, which is an unordered list. So this one will get these styles. And we set the display of that to flex. So now if we say we uncomment this, we can see how everything goes from a column to being in a row. We set the list style type to none, which gets rid of the bullet point. And then we set some spacing between each of them. Now let's style our logo, which of course is this right here. And I'm just gonna do that with the ID logo, which is shown right here. We have an ID of logo. And here we just get rid of the underlining for the anchor tags. We increase the font size and we set the cursor to be a pointer when we hover over it, which we can see right here. And now let's create that underline text effect. So the one we could see when we hover over these elements, we want an underline to appear and disappear. And we can do that with, of course, the hover pseudo class. So now we have a class underline text. And what we are essentially doing is just toggling this text decoration color. 
so we're setting it to be transparent initially, but when we hover over it, we're setting it to be our primary color, which is white. So now if we hover over, we can see how it appears and disappears. But we also added, make the transition last one second so it doesn't instantly jump. And note how we use the text decoration color and not the text decoration property because the text decoration property doesn't work with CSS transitions. So the text decoration, for example, here we set to none, which gets rid of the underline. In this case, we're doing, using the color and setting it to transparent instead. But this is all it takes to build this. So now if we go full screen, let me get rid of this, we can see we have our simple nav bar right here. But so this is all it takes to build this. If you like this video, please consider downloading my Chrome extension called Witceptor. Link is in the description. But besides that, thank you for liking and subscribing, and hope to see you in the next one. Have a good one.